Netflix shares surging in the after hours session after the company reported a blockbuster fourth quarter Tuesday after the market close. Welcome to Variety's fourth quarter media earnings coverage. I'm Heidi Chung, media analyst and correspondent for Variety Intelligence Platform. Streaming giant Netflix reporting earnings per share of $1.19 on revenue of $6.64 billion in its latest quarter. The company officially crossing the 200 million subscriber mark in Q4 after adding a whopping 8.51 million global paid subscribers. VIP's chief media analyst, Andy Wallenstein, joins me to help break down Netflix's most recent quarter. Andy, so is blowout too strong of a word here? There was so much to love in Netflix's fourth quarter results. Yeah, and the funny thing is, there was concern that this so-called pull forward effect COVID-19 would have in that first half of the year was gonna drain Netflix's subscriber totals in the second half. And it clearly had an impact in the third quarter, but the fourth quarter is looking really good. Now that may also be a reflection of the fact that in many pockets of the world, including the US, people are spending a lot of time indoors, not just because of the winter, but because the pandemic has been such a persistent presence. But in a weird way, not only do I think the pandemic helped Netflix again in the fourth quarter, but also other streaming services. And Andy, when we take a look at that overall number, it really is surprising and it's impressive, but I wanna break apart both US and Canada and then international, because Netflix saying that 83% of 2020 net sub additions of nearly 37 million came from outside the US and Canada. So how much longer do you think international is gonna be this big of a growth driver for Netflix? It's been a big growth driver for a while. It will continue to be a big growth driver for a while. Anyone who's looking at just the domestic side of the business is not getting the full picture here, especially when you see what's going on in Europe, Middle East. Uh, That's where the biggest growth is for Netflix. And what that means essentially is that a massive lead very well may be insurmountable because look at the fact that the competitors of Netflix really have so much further to go to catch up it's a little more even in the U.S. So Andy, spending massive amounts of money and cash on content really paid off for Netflix. The company says it plans to be free cash flow neutral this year and free cash flow positive every year after 2021. And it says it's no longer going to need external financing. So this is a major validation of Netflix's strategy. I want to get your thoughts on the notion that Netflix will be free cash flow positive and they're going to generate free cash flow sustainably going forward too. Honestly, I think this is even bigger news than the great subscriber ad total that they came up with this quarter. You know, this is what will silence the skeptics that have been chirping now for for really a decade that Netflix was getting in over its skis by assembling about $15 billion in debt to put together original programming at levels that the world has never seen. I mean, in retrospect, of course, it looks brilliant and perfect, but it really was a huge risk Netflix was taking all along. I understand where the skeptics were coming from, but the skeptics are wrong. Back in October, Netflix hiked the price of its services here in the U.S., and we also recently saw some price increases both in the U.K. as well as Canada. Now, at the time, many were concerned that the price hikes would lead to higher churn, but that was definitely not the case when we take a look at the last quarter. So how much longer do you think Netflix has this kind of pricing power? It really is remarkable that Netflix got as many subscribers as it did this quarter, given that price hike, given this is a time where, look at the economy right now, there's going to be plenty of price conscious consumers out there, but apparently they're spending on Netflix. So so I'll bet you there are people at Netflix right now saying, when do we do the next hike? Maybe it will come at a uh, quicker interval than the cadence of price hikes they've had going on for years now would lead us to believe. I think Netflix has to be emboldened by what it can charge, and that could come sooner the next hike than you might assume. VIP's chief media analyst, Andy Wallenstein, thank you so much for breaking down Netflix's most recent quarter with me. And for more in-depth analysis, head over to variety.com slash VIP.